What's up guys? It's been 24 hours and I'm doing my first plate reading on my cereal dilutions. So I just wanted to go through um, a couple of them that I observed growth on. Most of these over to here are, are all negative. So that's kind of what I'm expecting, especially at 24 hours. Um, typically, you know, you might get a little yeast or cocci bacteria, which is what it looks like on these plates. So you can see a little bit of condensation, which could have contributed. Um, but then here's another Piapino with the same dilution that is showing some growth. Um, I'll go ahead and switch the camera around so I can describe what I'm looking at and um, what I do to note it. All right, so I've got my Piapino dilutions here. Um, I've got my 1,000 and you can notice a couple colonies forming. So this to me looks like yeast. Um, there might be a couple mycelial colonies, which would be awesome because see those larger four? Um, it's probably bacterial, but it's too early to tell. So this one is probably going to get taken over, um, but that's why we do the dilutions. If we look at the 10 to the four, it's kind of the same same idea and I'm noticing a lot of them right here so to me um, I must have picked up some contamination on the lid of the dish or something that's what it looks like to me but because this one is uh, similar then I mean there's not enough plates to make a definite assumption but I think that there is possibly some yeast contamination in that spore print. Anyway, the beauty of going from 10 to 3, 10 to 4, and now I have my 10 to 5 dilution, you can see that the amount of growth is significantly less. So if I count some of these colonies up on the plate, so that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, maybe 10 colonies of yeast. So if you multiply that by 10 to the fifth, um, that's gonna be 100,000 CFUs, which is a lot of yeast. But if we're lucky, I can mark this plate wherever I see the growth and then check it daily. And if there's any spore isolates that appear where maybe where these colonies are, um, you're gonna want the mycelium to show up where there's no red dots and that way I can isolate those colonies moving forward. So what I do is, especially in the first three or four days, if I see any kind of growth, I'll just mark it with a marker and that way, even if it is mycelium, um, you'll know within the first, you know, three or four days if it's actually going to be growing mycelium, there will be uh, white hyphae coming out of it. I could even grab a microscope right now and take a, a loop full and put it under a slide and stain it and observe the structure of this organism. But if I just wait two or three more days, then it's going to reveal itself. So I'm pretty excited that, you know, my cereal dilutions worked and the majority of my plates are negative. So I'm just kind of waiting waiting around for the mycelium to grow but that is a uh, the first 24 hours so I just went ahead and labeled all of these yeast colonies that I'm looking at and as you can see this one on the left which was the 10 to the fourth dilution clearly has about 10 times as many more yeast molecules as um, this plate which is a 10 to the fifth so even though it's invisible this is probably what's happening to the spores and out of those spores, probably a certain percentage of these is not going to be viable either. So it's actually a little bit lower when it comes to spores compared to yeast. Um, but this is the idea. So hopefully in three or four days, we'll start to see some sporadic growth on this plate. And then we can go ahead and isolate those onto the smaller dishes. Um, so that's what we're going to be looking for.